I used to be and still am the worst trader in the world when it comes to actually picking the trade and sticking with it and hoping to make money. That, that not, doesn't happen for me. Murphy's Law happens every single time. It just, uh, I wasn't made to be a trader. It's not really something that's with me. You know how some people are just lucky gamblers. They gamble and they win. Well, I can't even pick the direction. And there's only two directions, up or down. I can't even do that. But because of mathematics, which I'm pretty good at, I was able to overcome that shortfall and create a pretty good strategy. I actually am very proud of it. And uh, one of the reasons why I was uh, a bad trader, because I did exactly what you guys did about 15 minutes ago. Listen to that CNBC bullshit. Because see what happens, there's some guy that is predicting the market. He doesn't know his rear end from a hole in the ground, excuse me, but he will get on TV and try to convince you that he knows. He doesn't know. He doesn't have a crystal ball. Nobody knows. Nobody in this world knows. But what he will accomplish, and that is that he will implant your mind with ideas. You will get married to those ideas. And when the market doesn't go exactly as you believe, you lose money. Because you're not good enough of a trader to get out of a trade. You're married, you're emotionally connected to that trade. Plus, I, you know, I was naive and I believed what those people were telling me. The training I was learning and paying for, ironically, that all that was correct, true, no. It's not. In order for me to become successful, and honestly, I haven't had a losing trade in years. I think that's pretty damn good. You know? So in order to become successful, I had to forget everything I learned. Had to restart from the beginning and basically depart from the conventional, widely accepted way of training, trading. And that's what I'm gonna try to show you today. All right, three biggest lies in trading. We talked about it last time. First of all, never, ever, ever trade without a stop loss. Total BS. I never, ever, 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 ever trade with a stop loss. I only started making money when I stopped losing stop using stop losses. I don't have a stop loss on any of my trades, ever. And the reason being is that I try to mimic the, the way the big financial institutions trade, the big successful traders. Do you believe that Warren Buffett would have a stop on his trade? He would take a five billion dollar position in, uh, in uh, Bank of America or Goldman Sachs and then he would say to himself, well, I think we should put a really tight stop loss behind this trade. Do you think he trades like that? Do you think Goldman Sachs will take a five billion uh, dollar position in oil or whatever? and then they will put a tight stop loss behind that trade? Do you believe that? If you believe that, you're crazy. Because that's not how they trade. They want you to trade like that because that's a way to lose money. All right, so that's a, that's a lie. Another lie is the market is always right. Really, who says that? Who says that the market is always right? Why is it that a couple of days ago, Euro dollar was at $1.28? Today is at $1.31. Which one of those was right? Did the world change that much in two days? Fundamentally, did it really? The market is never right. It always is looking for the right price. And that's a good thing because 
it gives you the ability and the opportunity to get in and take some of that, some of, uh, make some of the profit. And the third one is the history repeats itself. Well, uh, I never figured how the history repeats itself. How? Don't believe that. Don't believe in any formats on the graphs, nothing like that. The only thing that will ever matter to you if you want to be a successful trader and never want to have a losing trade is the price. At the end of the day, the only thing that, the only thing that matters is the price. Nothing else. All right? Now, uh, if you were here last time, you also learned that uh, uh, there's one way that I look at the market in terms of determining, uh, determining the trend, and that is basically picking uh, or taking a 20-period moving average and looking at the slope of it. If the slope of my 20-period moving average is going up, the trend is up, particularly if the price is above the line. If it's going the other direction, then the market's going down. That is the only thing I need, nothing, nothing else. Uh, only market, only uh, price matters. I only use three simple technical indicators, none of those, all the extra crap that they have, uh, one of them being the 20-period uh, uh, moving average, the other one, uh, MACD and CCI. And I only use those to confirm my entries nothing else just for confirmation that I'm correct uh, I already talked about eliminating stop losses one of the most important things you will need to do if you want to be a successful trader is to eliminate your own emotions that is one of the biggest uh, obstacles in in trader success the emotions get in uh, in the way you start believing that you are right or you should be right. The market should be going this way. The market never does what you want it to do. It sometimes happens to go in the direction you want it to go, but not because you want it to. It's because it wants to. And trust me, there's, there's many times where you'll be wondering how this makes any sense. Most of the times the markets make no sense, but they are still an opportunity to make money if you know what you're doing. Now, what I feel the biggest difference between the losers and the winners, and there's a big difference between them, is how you handle your losing trades. That is what makes the difference. Anybody can take money off the table when you happen to pick the right direction. Is what happens when the market turns against you, and it inevitably will. It will have, no matter how good of a picker of the direction of the market you are, sooner or later, the market will turn and will go the opposite direction. What will you do when that happens? That is the difference that separates winners from losers. Losers take a loss. Winners know how to manage those losing trades. And that's what I want to focus on today. Now, <clears throat> now, so let's move forward. How many of you want to know how not to have another losing trade ever in your trading life? Right? Already. Now, why do I want to help you? Well, because I'm crazy. Some people think I am. But uh, basically, I believe that if I help you get better trading results than what you've been getting so far, I believe you will tell other people about how to trade the right way. That's all I ask. Fair enough? You promise me that you'll do that. Good deal. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to recap the trade entry. Because every trade has two parts. Is the trade entry and the trade exits. 
And this is what also separates traders from investors. How many of you are investors? You're not going to make any money investing in the stock market, I, believe me. Ten years ago, if you had bought uh, shares of Bank of America, trust me, you would not be in profit today. There are a few companies, maybe, but how do you know which ones out of maybe eight, ten thousand? 10,000? Too much work. Bullshit. Why would you also... I will show you that if you hang on to a uh, stock or a commodity or even currency long enough, it is just a matter of time before you start losing money. Similarly, if you have a large enough of an account, it's just a matter of time before uh, Pretty much any commodity or any currency pair will become a winning trade for you. But you have to have a large enough account to do that. But that's really not important today. Uh, we're going to focus on entering at the, at the proper time, at the correct time, ideally at the best possible time, we're not always going to be right, but we will be right 75% of the time. And right there, you will be 25% uh, ahead of everybody else. Because everybody else really is, for the most part, only guessing. So that's, that's about a 50-50. So would your trading results improve if you could turn every losing trade into a winner? You think? Imagine if you had all the winners would be winners, and all the losers, worst case, break even. Would that be good? All right. So are you then ready to take some money from these bloody fat cats that, that you listened to just a few minutes ago that call your money dumb money? Your money is dumb money for them. All right. Let's go do it. All right. Let's recap the three-step trading uh, set up. So in other words, the entry. How do we do the entry? Well, step one, if you guys remember, I talked about predicting the market. What is the market going to do tomorrow or in the next uh, uh, six hours, four hours, and so on? Um, how did we do that? Do you guys remember? What did we do? What did we use? What chart did we use? We used a Heiken Ashi chart, and we looked at, at a daily chart Right over here, there's a daily Heiken Ashi chart. And basically, the rule of the setup was that we will take trades only in the direction of the last Heiken Ashi bar. So if the bar is green, in other words, the bar is up, we will only take trades to the upside. If the bar is red, in other words, the market's going down, then we will only take trades to the downside, no matter what happens. We will only take opposite trade when the Heiken Ashi bar changes color. We'll wait it out, no matter what happens, right? That was, uh, that was rule number one. So right here, what we see is that this last bar is green. You see that? If the last bar is green, which way are we going to trade now? We're going to trade up. All right? All right? Keep that in mind. Uh, similarly... Same graph, euro dollar, we've got the 240 minute chart. We can all, uh, for those that trade uh, more often, have more time to spend in, in front of the computer, you can take a 240 minute, uh, which is a four hour, four hour chart. Now, you look at the last bar, what color is it? Green. Which way we're gonna trade? Oh. Right, if you look at, if you go back and see this little, uh, tiny green bar on the daily chart. This is exactly the same thing. So basically what we've got is this, this little part is the representation of this thing over here. So on the 240 uh, minute uh, chart, you will see the change in the direction a little quicker, all right? 
That's, that's, what that, that's what that means. So which direction are we going to trade? Up, right? Up. Next, step number two. There's only three steps. Very, very, very simple. Determine the trend. And the trend we determine by what? Using the 20 period moving average, the one that I always use. And we'll do that on maybe a 60 minute or a 30 minute chart. And uh, also, uh, we will look at the Heikenashi, Heikenashi chart. Because the Heikenashi chart is a lot smoother. It's not as choppy, not as noisy as the standard candlestick or, or bar chart. Now, what we look at is the, the slope of the uh, 20 period moving average. If the slope is up, we'll be trading up. In other words, what we need to do, we need to match our primary direction which we picked in, in step one with our trend on a, on a smaller period chart, like a 30 minute or 60 minute. Um, and then if the, uh, obviously, if the slope is up, the price is above the line, the market's going up. We're trying to synchronize the two so far. Step one and step two. If the price is below EMA and the slope usually points down, then the trend is down. Now, if the trend is down, if we want to trade, we will only trade on the primary direction that is down. Always in the same direction, right? For example, here we have a 60-minute... Uh, 60-minute uh, uh, euro dollar chart. The slope right here is what? Up, correct? Color of the bar is green. Price is above or below? Above. What does this mean? We're trading up. Here we've got a 30 minutes, same thing, same exact same graph. Slope is up. Color is green. Price is definitely above. So now we've lined up step one and step two. The last thing to do is to get in. Last thing is the entry trigger, is the, en the actual entry. How do we do that? We do that also on a Heikenashi uh, chart. But we don't necessarily, I mean, you can if you really, if you, if you don't have a Renko, uh, Renko chart or a range chart, you could probably use a 15 minute or a 10 minute uh, uh, Heikenashi chart as well. But I like these better. And the reason why I like uh, range charts and Renko charts for my entries better is because if the market is not moving, I don't want to trade. I don't want to get in if the market is not making at least somewhat of a move. I'll wait for the move. There's no point getting in when the market is not moving, regardless of what uh, the direction yesterday might have been or what my primary direction or what my trend is. I want to get in when the market is moving. And the advantage of the range chart and the Renko chart is that they will only paint a bar when the market is moving. They are only price sensitive. They are not time sensitive. So I'm looking for, I'm looking for a way to get in regardless of what time frame it is on, but only as long as the market is moving. I'm not looking for, uh, for time just because uh, a uh, uh, five minute chart might paint a small green bar that's not enough for me to get into a, into a, tr uh, into a trade. I want to see a considerably a better move than just a small bar on a five minute, five minute bar, right? So uh, having said that, let's look at how I'd be getting into a trade. This is a 10 tick uh, range chart. So in other words, every one of these bars will only be painted when the market made 10 ticks. In this particular case, being that it's a uh, foreign currency uh, chart, it is 10 pips. If the market doesn't make 10 pips, no bar will be painted. That's how I want to get in. So right here, which direction are we trading based on step one and step two? We're trading up. 
So right here would be my first opportunity, confirmed with my MACD. Right? My MACD is bouncing off right here. Here's my uh, uh, range, uh, range bar that is green. Next opportunity would be confirmed here, right there. There's another opportunity. There's another opportunity. So there's four opportunities to get in uh, right there. If we, uh, obviously, we're trading up. Now, one thing uh, to keep in mind, and we talked about it last time, is that when I first enter a trade, I never put my entire foot in. I basically tip my toe into the water, if you will. If I have an account large enough to make a one uh, lot trade, then my initial entry will only be for one fifth of the size that I would normally trade. Now, why is that? Why would I want to split my trade into five pieces, if you will? into five fifths because I may not be correct the first time and if I if I am not correct the first time I don't want to use all of my ammunition on the first salvo in other words I'm saving my ammunition for a potentially better entry if I do not happen to be correct the first time Right? Then the second time I will use the second fifth, third time the third fifth, and so on. And ideally, if I try five times, hopefully I will have picked finally the right direction. And, but moreover, I will have improved my cost basis, especially if the market dips. Right? You're with me on that? All right, so that is the reason why I would only enter with one-fifth of, of the position that I would normally, normally enter. All right, so we, we had some of, these, uh, some of these entries, right? Now, over here, we've got uh, the Renko chart. I, I actually, Renko chart is my favorite chart by far for trade entry. And uh, this is a five-tick. Uh, meaning, well, again, if it is, if this is uh, euro dollar, this is uh, this is five pips, and and you see how 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 nicely this thing paints. If I was using a uh, uh, a regular bar chart or maybe a regular uh, or or standard candlestick chart, I would not see all these not all these. Nice moves. I would have probably be, been whipsawed several times along the way over here. So again, similarly as on the previous one, uh, right here we've got uh, four opportunities to enter. We enter, we're going long, and again, one-fifth of, of the position. You'll appreciate this when the market goes against you or retraces a little bit here, a little bit there then you'll be able to improve your cost basis uh, along the way. So uh, again, we're going to sum sum uh, summarize this. Step number one, primary direction on a daily or 240-minute Heikinashi chart. Step two, trend. Slope of a 20-period moving average, either up or down on a Heikinashi chart. You look at the price in relation to the actual line of the uh, moving average. If it's above it, slope is up, the trend is up. If it is below, if the price is below the line, slope of the line is down, it's down. It cannot be any more complicated uh, or can, uh, any more simple than that. That's pretty simple, right? Finally, trigger. Again, what you want to do is synchronize step one, step two, step three. That's it. Now, when you can do that, and this is, what my, uh, this is what my chart setup would look like if I were trading manually. If I were doing this manually, then this is how I'd be uh, looking at my chart. This is my primary direction up. This is my trend, obviously, just turning right here, going up. And my entry would have been somewhere, somewhere over here, right? 
That's the entry confirmed. When you use this simple setup, then you will be 75 to 80, you will have 75 to 80 percent trade entry accuracy. You will always make money when you pick the right direction. Now, exit rules. This is when you're trading manually. All right, when you're trading manually, there are very simple rules. Rule number one, when in profit. Take profit when the range or Renko bar changes color. Simple as that. When you're in profit, the bar changes color, take it. Take the profit. Example, you entered here, bar changes color, you're out. Take the profit. You will wait for the next opportunity. Next opportunity, confirmed over here, you get in, you get out. Not a big profit, still a profit. Enter, take it. Enter, take it. Simple as that. The bar changes color. Now, bar changes color, you take profit. Trade exit rules when not in profit. Now, not in prof profit, there are two things. If the market is still in, if the market trend is still intact, then you can improve the cost basis, Im right? Improve your position by dollar cost averaging. And you can dollar cost average as many as four times. Remember when we, at the entry part of, uh, uh, of the system, only entered with one fifth of the position? that we would normally get in with. You've got four fifths left over. And if the market doesn't necessarily go with you right there and then, as long as the same entry co conditions are still in place or present, that is step number one and step number two, you can enter as many as four more times. And that will improve your cost basis. And then, when you're in profit, the bar changes color. Guess what? Rule number one. When in profit, range or Renko bar changes color, take profit. So after you've improved your position, provided that the entry condi conditions are still present, when the bar changes color, you take profit on the entire position and repeat the process. Now, so far, you're still making money, right? Now, for example, you entered here. You thought this was a good entry. But the market just kind of doesn't want to cooperate. I mean, eventually it will be going up, but you don't know this. You don't see, you don't have a crystal ball. You don't know what, what is going to happen. So you, you just kind of watch the market, see what happens, see what happens. And now over here, you've got an opportunity to enter back in, provided that step number one, that is the uh, primary direction and trend are still to the upside. You enter at this point, and the difference between this price where you entered and this price uh, is, is basically uh, has to be at least, the difference between the prices has to be at least the difference of a trade recovery interval. A trade, uh, trade recovery interval is simply one daily average range of a market divided by five. So if the market, say Euro dollar, if Euro dollar has an average daily range of 100 pips, then your minimum trade recovery interval would be 100 divided by five, which is very good. How are you measuring range? Range, I will look at the last 14 days. I will look at, uh, 
average true range ATR of the last 14 daily bars. That's just basic stuff, right? So I will, I will look at that divided by 5. Why 5? I like 5 because I divide my position by 5. I have 5 fifths of my position to enter at different points. Now, there's also another reason why I use 5. Because the way I dollar cost average, and I do this with software, I enter at different points. I take my entries from different charts. Take it from a 5 minute, then from a 15 minute, then from a 30 minute, then from a 60 minute, and from a 240 minute. When you add them up, that's five different ones. 5, 15, 30, 60, 240, right? So on every one of those, if, if the market's going with me, on every one of those, I use my one-fifth. So by the time I get in, I improve my cost basis, and it just uh, makes so much more sense, right? So here we are, trade recovery interval, and right there you've got the trade, uh, trade uh, recovery interval in place. Rule number one, original trend is still intact. Rule number two, minimum trade recovery interval. Difference of spacing, difference or spacing between two trades is minimum one-fifth of average da daily range. And you've got maximum four additional trades after the first one, right? That's the five-fifths. So trade exit rules. If not in profit and original entry conditions are no longer intact, apply hedging and when Heikana, when Heikanashi bar changes color on the trend chart. Now, or this is a highly sophisticated, the most secret ever way of trading. And it's called, I call it zone recovery. It, it was my team at Global Profit Technologies invented this. And it is by far the most revolutionary way of trading. It will not allow you even to take a loss. The way I develop the strat strategy is that I I look at not just these three charts, I look at probably about three, about eight charts at the same time. Uh, for me, how difficult is it to do for me? Well, not as difficult now as when I first starting, started getting the ideas how I should be trading, obviously. Uh, but it's not really that hard. You just have to be disciplined and you can't be trying to rationalize and contemplate and procrastinate, none of that stuff. You, you, you have to pretty much, women are better at this than men, by the way, because they don't think as much as men, <laughs> men do. And that's meant in a good way because men, uh, and, and, and the reason why I'm saying this is because I have friends that are traders and they just, they talk themselves out of a trade and they all, they try to beat the system, always improve, thinking that they're better than the system itself. And then what ends up happening is that they deviate from the system, then they get themselves in positions that they didn't really want to be in in the first place and, and it's just, they create chaos for themselves. Uh, but when I trade manually, I look at the 5 minute as well as the 15, 30, 60, and 240, and I take my trades not off of just one. I take five entries at the same time as opposed to just one. That's me, though. Zone recovery. And it's basically a very simple mathematical algorithm. What is an algorithm? Algorithm is a mathematical formula. That's all it is. And it's a simple one at that. You know why? Because the markets are not complicated. They only can go up or down. That's it. There, are, there is no third direction, like into the wall or into the screen or somehow 3D. It's a two, up or down. If they're flat, they're flat. You're, you, there's nothing you can do. But really what you're concerned about is the two directions, right? 
now, uh, this is manual hedging. If you're trading manually, this is a good way to escape or to improve your cost basis or improve your position when the market goes against you, right? Zone recovery is an advanced hedging. It's a step above this. I would say probably two steps. But let's look at, let's look at the hedging. If you enter, and I think somebody asked over here, no, this lady, was it? No, or that lady right there. You said this is where you exit the position. And I answered, I don't exit the position. Instead of exiting, I hedge. In other words, definition of hedging is staking an opposite trade, exact opposite trade. And I do, I do hedging or I hedge when the market goes against me. In other words, when the trend, that's step two, when the trend changes. And I'm still in a position that has not made me any profit yet. So what would I do? All right. This is my original trade. Obviously, I got in at the wrong time at the top of the move. Market turns. What do I do? Oops. All right. And we're looking at a, uh, this is a six, you see this? This is a 60 minute chart. So this is my trend chart. When this happens on the trend chart, guess what? I enter into a, this was a long position based on the original trend. Now I enter into a short position. Here's my hedge. Market goes down. I will exit the hedge when the trend resumes in the original direction or returns to the original direction. And that happens right here and it's actually confirmed on the MACD right here. So my original trade is still open. I did not exit it. All I did is in the meantime, I entered my hedge and I took the profit from here to there. Now, by, I'll take this back. By entering this position, which is a short position, I pretty much, as far as the broker is concerned, pretty much evened out my position because I have my long and my short, and that makes me flat. This could be my whole five-fifths right there because it's the 60-minute chart is the whole trend that changed. I might have been all already in. That, that is not important. What is important is that when the market turned, on my trend chart, I go into an opposite position. So in other words, I open a short. The broker sees me flat. As the market goes down and I close the short or exit the hedge with profit, automatically that original long reopens up. Correct? Can you see that? Basic math. This position was never closed. The original trade is still, still there. And as the market is turning, now that I'm in profit, I take my aggregate profit and I'm out. Now, if trend doesn't return, if trend doesn't return, if this thing never was to happen, guess what? When the trend reverses, I'm adding onto the short position. In other words, I'm reversing positions. Next. Now, remember, and this is, this is kind of important, no matter how good your trade entry is, the market will sooner or later go against you. Who would agree with that? <laughs> All right. It will be your ability to handle these situations during reversing markets that will determine how good of a trader you're going to be and how successful, how profitable you're going to be. 
Most people just sit there and sweat as their trade is eroding their account. You've been there, done that, right? Right? All right. Zone recovery trading algorithm. Here we are. Uh, it's a defensive hedging strategy. You don't use zone recovery to make money. You use the entry, the, the simple trade setup, the entry setup to make money. That's what makes you money. But zone recovery is def defense when everything and the kitchen sink go against you. That's how you get out of a bad trade. It's a defensive hedging strategy. In other words, opening a trade in the opposite direction of the original trade based on a mathematical formula, also called algo or algorithm, algo trading. You've heard that, right? Who uses that? Who else? The guys with money because they know they're not as smart as fast as a computer can be, right? Which eliminates trading losses altogether every time, 100% of the time, when set up properly. Now, what it, does, it literally turns every losing trade into a profitable trading sequ uh, sequence. In worst case, break even. Unless, of course, the markets completely stop moving. Now, if the markets were to stop moving and they say, okay, this is it, we have no more trading, everybody go home, then we've got nothing to talk about, right? All right, this is, ladies and gentlemen, this is a big deal. This is life changing, it is earth shattering. It sets up, a comp in my mind, in my opinion, a completely new way of trading, a new paradigm in trading as we know it. And I'm the one to bring it to you. <laughs> All right, so here we are. Let's assume this is our trade setup. Price is here. That's the current price. Now, where do you think the market's going to go based on this? We don't know, and for this illustration, we don't really care. That's not important. If you do your setups right, you will be right 75% of the time. Now we're only going to talk about the rest of the time. Now, we could say that the market is going to go up. This could be a long trade setup, right? Now, if we're right, if we write, this is going to be our target. Now, the market, though, could be going this way, could be going down. See, we don't, from this point forward, from here, we don't know yet. See, what, what really blows me is when, you know, I listen to these teachers that probably have never traded in their lifetime, and they're showing a chart, and, oh, this is, uh, you go in here, this is where you take the profit, you go in there, this is where you take the profit, but they don't trade. They only do this with the benefit of hindsight. Now, we don't have hindsight when we trade. We have a blank canvas. We don't know what's going to happen. The market can go up. We have a target. We want to make money. Or, or the market can go down. Then we have this target. Right? Now, you will become an excellent trader when you make money as long as any target get as long as any one of these targets get hit. Now, and I will argue with you that no matter what this price is, sooner or later, I don't know when, 
And I don't know which one will come first, but I know in time, the price will be either here or either there, right? The market will either go up or go down. That is one thing I know for certainty. I may not know when it will hit down here or up here. And I may not know which one will hit first. I also know this. It will not happen at the same time. <laughs> it will be one or the other. Now, and I present to you that I will make money as long as one of those targets get hit, regardless of which one it is first. Doesn't matter. Right? Here's how it's going to happen. Here's the price. And we're trading euro dollar now. 2950. This is from a couple of days ago. <clears throat> now, let's assume that our setup is to the upside. Right? So we're, we're going to place a long trade, one lot. Let's assume we're trading five lots. So this is our initial one-fifth, right? And uh, this is going to be our target, long target, 150 pips. We're going to try to hit 131. Well, we're going to try to. We're hoping to. We're not going to affect the market. But th Now, if we are right, obviously, we're going to hit the target. But let's assume we might be partially right or we might be completely wrong but we don't hit that target yet. The market goes the other direction. Well, if the market goes the other direction, it will go down. We have a long trade. What do we do now? Well, we will get to a point where we're X number of pips, and let's just call it for the sake of illustration, when we're 50 pips on the water or 50 pips in a loss on this particular trade, we will enter a short trade, a hedging trade, hedge trade, right? And with that trade, we're going to target profit on this trade, a short trade, 150 pips. And that price would be 127.50. Now, in order for us to do that, with this trade still open, we'd have to place a trade of 1.4 lots. Now, the key is, worst case, to break even. So stay with me here. I am one lot long at 125.50. If I happen to hit this target, I will be 200 pips short. Uh, I'm sorry, 200, I will be losing 200 pips on this one lot, correct? So I will be 200 pips down from 129.50 down, down to 127.50, correct? correct? True or false? True. True. But at the same time, on 1.4 lots, I will be up 150 pips. So you do the math for me. How much will I be up here? Anybody? 1.4 times 150? 210. So aggregate, I'll be what? 10 pips up. I'll close my entire sequence which started off with a long trade, I'll close the sequence on my recovery target with 10 pip, with a 10 pip profit, even though the market went against me. Now, easier said than done, right? Well, suppose the market reverses, goes back up again, doesn't hit my target. Well, <laughs> not what I really want to have happen, but guess what? On the right on the same 
uh, at the same entry point as I placed my initial one lot long trade, I'll place another long trade. And this time it will be another lot. So right at this point, I will have one plus one, two lots going up, and one point, the, by the way, these are all open trades. I don't close any trades unless the whole sequence is in profit. That's what we established, right? So I got one plus one is two going up. If I hit this target, then I will have two lots in profit 150 pips, which is what? Plus 300. Now, I will have 1.4 lots, 200 pips down, which is what? Minus 280. So, on my long recovery, my long recovery target, I'll close the entire position with a 20 pip profit. Now, so if I hit it, if I hit here, Guess what? I made profit. If I hit here, I made profit. Suppose, and, and basically what I have established, I have established my zone recovery area, which is the difference of my acceptable loss on the first original trade. What's my acceptable loss if the market goes against me? 100 pips, 200 pips? 50 pips, in this, for the sake of illustration, we made this 50, right? So that's my uh, zone recovery area. And the way the zone recovery algorithm works is that it places long trades on the upper boundary and short trades on the lower or bottom boundary. So that if I don't hit this target and the market reverses and heads back, then I will place another trade down here at 1.4 lots. Now do the math with, math with me. I have one, two lots. If I hit this area, if I hit this target, two lots, each of them 200 pips down. That's minus what? Minus 400. But I have 1.4 plus 1.4, that's 2.8. In profit, 150 times 2.8 is what? 420? Right? So, if I hit this area, or hit, hit this target, I what? I made 20 pips. Right? See, I don't know when or which one I'm going to hit first. But I'll tell you this, sooner or later, I'll hit one. If I don't hit it this time, the market turns. Place a trade of 1.9. You add them up and you'll find out when you hit this area or when you hit this target, you'll be making money again. If it reverses, that will be 2.5 lots you hit this target, you make money. So basically, it doesn't matter which direction the market is going and doesn't matter which direction your original trade is. Sooner or later, it will hit a price above or below your entry. And when it does, you will clear the profit from the entire trading sequence. That way, you never have to take a loss. You don't have a stop loss. Zone recovery, in my opinion, is such an awesome strategy that you can even trade against the trend and still make money. Now, I don't recommend it, but if you can do it, how much better does it get? See, I don't sweat and, and try to figure out which direction the market is going to go anymore. It doesn't matter. I make money every time. Every time. Every time the sequence of trades 
closes, worst case, I've broken even. Everything else is profit. Now that's pretty good math, if you ask me, right? So when using zone recovery in the proper way, proper way, I'll, sh I'll show you, it is virtually impossible to lose money regardless of your order or market direction. So if you really think about this, everything you have learned up until this point, up until now, you can throw out the window because it won't matter anymore. It doesn't matter. We change it. There's a new paradigm. Now, let's look at it again. Current price. Let's assume the market's going up. We enter along right here, the current price. If we're right, we make money here. That will happen three out of four times when you properly do your entry setups. If we're wrong, market reverses. If the market reverses, we enter short at the bottom of the zone recovery. If we're wrong, we make money here. All right, now, same thing. If we think market's going down, if we're right, we make money down here. If we're wrong, market's going up. We enter long here at the top of the zone recovery. Basically, the zone recovery is the set number of pips that your originally, original trade goes in the red. That's it. Here's how your trading results uh, should be. Three out of four trades, you take profit because that's just good setup. One out of four, worst case, break even. Now that to me is pretty good results, right? So now how do you do these these zone recoveries. Uh, well, obviously this is easier said than done when trading manually. I mean, you can't do it. You, you just create a calculate, have a little chart and basically have your longs and shorts and this is what's going to happen. Also, you have to sit there and really in the 21st century, I don't know very many successful traders that still trade manually. If you show me someone who trades manually, I'll show you someone who could be making a whole lot more money. Now, so for best trading results, you should always use automated trading software that will never miss a trading opportunity and will manage your trades 24 hours a day. Okay, I'll show you how this works in real life. You wanna see? Well, real data. Just to illustrate uh, a few uh, points to you, what I'm going to do, I'm going to trade only in one direction. I don't know which way the market's going to go, and I don't really care. I mean, if I were trading live, obviously I would care, but for this illustration, I'm not going to care. Um, what I'll do, I'll set up my, my data. I'll just load my data in. We're going to trade pound yen. And uh, I've got about a year and a half worth, worth of data. We're not going to be sitting here forever uh, processing this data, but just for you to see how it really works. I'm going to, uh, now write what you see over here. This is, the, this is the simulator. And in this window, you'll see the data going through, and you will also see the equity curve the open trades, closed trades, profits, and everything else. I'll explain it as we, uh, as we go. Uh, 
Over here, this is a harvester. Those that have been using the software for some time, uh, you guys know that this is the actual trading engine of the software. And basically, I have certain algorithms set up over here. I'm not going to go into, uh, into the details. I'll just, I'll just pick one, and I'll show you how I would set up the zone recovery. And the zone recovery setup is... Uh, is over here. Can you, can you see that? Right up there, this, this window. So I've got, uh, I've got uh, the zone size. That's the width of the zone. Uh, I have it set up at 200. And then I have my pip move or the zone recovery move to the target line from the edge or end of the zone to the target line as 100 pips. This is my spread and fees, and this is my target. I only use this target in the worst case scenario. I could put zero to break even, but if I'm gonna go through the trouble, then I can, uh, uh, then I basically at least I want 10 pips. I could, I could put 100 pips, 500 pips, whatever. And uh, to calculate each and every trade, basically I'll just click on calculate, and if I had it set up this way, on each turn where the market turns from going down to up and from up to down, it, uh, uh, the software automatically calculates the size of each trade and basically gives me the absolute position. The absolute position is, dif is the difference between the shorts and the longs. In other words, whichever direction the market is going, if it is above the zone, that means the market is going up. If it is below the zone, the market's going down, and we will have an absolute position to that side, uh, either short or long. And also, the, uh, the software will calculate for me uh, the, uh, the, the loss at each turn. In other words, every time I'm placing a new trade, obviously, I didn't hit my target yet. I didn't hit my profit target or else I wouldn't be entering, excuse me, zone recovery trades. So naturally, logically, I have to be underwater. So it calculates for me what my loss is, uh, uh, or drawdown, if you will, at each turn. And I, on that basis, I will determine whether that's an acceptable zone or whether that's an acceptable uh, uh, move, a zone recovery move. If I were, let's just say, if I picked a zone of 100, and let's just say that I am looking for a 300 pip move, I'll do recalculate, then I have a completely different set of numbers. My favorite one that I like to use is one like that, 200, and this one I'll set at 6,000. Now you would think 6,000, that's an impossible zone to reach. And yes, you would be right. But there's a, uh, there's a reason between my madness, and that's the fact that I dollar cost average these trades. So I will, tra I will have little tiny losses along the way, and then the profits from the other trades just completely bulldozer over those over those losses, as those of you who are following the demos, uh, as you're seeing it. It doesn't matter what your loss is, somehow in the next few days or next day or within a few minutes, all of a sudden there's a profit. How in the world does that happen? The reason why that happens because I average my entries. I don't just use one entry, I enter at different points. And then you have four trades that are long, every one of them be being protected by zone recovery, every single one, right? So anyway, so let me show you, let's just pick something here. Let's just go 200, 200 for the time being. And obviously this is for a, a this could be for a really big account. We don't want uh, 14, uh, 14 turns. We will not need 14 turns. 
So we can go over here and limit it to, let's just say, four. All right. Okay. Edit. And now we're ready. We're ready to trade. So you ready? That's it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and feed this data. I'll run the data. Now the data is queuing up. It's running and it will, it's a mi these are minute, minute datas. So it will be looking at the high price, low price, open price, close price on every bar. And it will feed it really, really quickly. And we're going to start January 1 at the beginning of uh, last year. And uh, I don't know which the market, well, I know which way the market is going to go because I've done this already, but it, it doesn't really matter because I'll run shorts individually and longs individually so you can see how, how the zone reco recovery works. And all we do is start. And the way I have the start set up is that every time the sequence ends, new long trade will be open. We're going to open only long trades regardless of where the market's going. This is absolutely idiotic because normally I would be looking at my setups, which I can set up in the software as well. So I would be trading in the direction of the, uh, of the prevailing trend. This way I'm just blindly jumping into the fire and see what happens, right? Idiotic, but let's do it. Uh, all right, so we, and every time the sequence stops, a new one opens in the same direction. That's the way we set it up. These will be our closed trades over here, and th these will be our open trades. So in other words, the trades that get opened will be able to monitor them right there. I apologize for having a small, sc my screen is a lot bigger but it just reduces it to this four by three. So now I'll, we'll speed it up over here. Now what you see, you will eventually see four lines. Uh, the blue line at the bottom is actually the direction of the market. Up, down, up, down. This is how the data uh, is being plotted. On the top, you will see a blue line. These will be all the trades that this is a combination of open and closed trades. Then it will be a green line. Those are all trades that have already closed with profit, presumably. And then there'll be a red line, and the red line is all the trades that have not yet closed, right? So as you see it, there, there it is. Now on, on this side, there's a, there's a calculator that calculates basically the closed trades. This is the open trades, and this is the combination. This is the size of uh, uh, the current trade. And down here, what we have is, a, uh, uh, is basically maximum drawdown. How much we're drawing down at any given time maximum. So right here, what we, uh, what we have, initial trade right here, that was, uh, I'm trading three mini lots, by the way. This was my initial trade, and we're running the data. It obviously didn't go my direction and the first on the first turn the first zone recovery trade was open and now here's the market obviously the market's going down well is there any wonder and we're looking at it uh, on the forex money machine or forex that side when I draw the graphs it slows the calculations down so I'll just uh, let it go and over, over here you see the status of the current open trades. The market's pretty flat. So far only two trades open, market is going down. Again, we're only trading up. We want to see how that zone recovery works. Can you see that? There's another trade, that got third one, right? So market, we opened to the upside, market went down, now it wants to go back up because the third trade is long. So what you see over here, this is the status of the open trades. Now obviously what we had before, that 
hit the target and closed. As the market is moving, the software is automatically opening trades to the upside and to the downside, uh, depending on where the market's going. Now, obviously, as you can tell over here, the market is pretty flat. Uh, as soon as it starts moving in one direction or the other, it doesn't matter which direction, it will close uh, all trades with a profit and profits will be added. Now we could do the same thing uh, to the short side because logically it is and mathematically it is really the very same thing. Last part of my presentation <clears throat> is very simply bringing this into reality. What all this means? Well, what this means is very simply this. There are new technologies out there, and in the 21st century, it is difficult to succeed when you are not using them. And I don't care how good of a trader you are, my experience is that the better traders are using the really good technology, the really good algos, fast computers. But the speed of the computer is not really as important because a couple of milliseconds is not going to make a difference. Maybe to those who are scalping right next door to the exchange because they're collecting the, uh, uh, the liquidity fees and things like that. But uh, to you, it's not really going to make any difference. I want to demonstrate a software that is not yet available to the public, and you're probably the very first ones to see it, and, so, and obviously there are some people who are already demoing it, but uh, there are, let's just say, less than 500 people worldwide that even have a clue that anything like this exists. And, uh, what it is is a software originally called the Forex Money Machine, but we've changed the name to uh, Forex Dynamic Auto Trader uh, or Forex DAT, Forex DAT. I could even use one of your guys' accounts. What do you think? <laughs> Eric, can I use yours? Go ahead. All right, Eric started off about three weeks ago, right, or so, with a uh, $100,000 account. Right now, he's up to about 116000 So uh, that's not bad, considering he never placed a single trade himself. <laughs> <laughs> the thing just works. It runs. And it's set up, basically, it is set up uh, through the engine, which we call Harvester. And the Harvester, uh, Harvester is a, as a sequence of trades. It first sets up the entry, and then it has a goal in mind, and the goal is to reach a certain profit target. If it doesn't reach that profit target, then it creates other trades and opens other harvesters that help it create or reach the profit target. One of those is the zone recovery. Before we get to the zone recovery, I wanna show you how the entry works. First of all, uh, the software itself, because it's a software, it's, it, it doesn't need any visual aids. Uh, it processes everything in the background. It doesn't use charts. Right? What it uses is a, is a table like this. And it doesn't even need this. This is just for us to have an idea of, of what the software is doing. So this is what we call the trend stable. And the trend stable is simply a visual picture of the entire foreign exchange market. All the uh, important currencies. I mean, obviously, it wouldn't have the Thai bat or the uh, I don't know, Chilean, Peso, or whatever they have over there. These are just the most important currencies. I prefer to trade 
euro, pound, dollar, yen for the most part. Now there might be a couple other ones, but I try to stay with an euro, pound, and the combination uh, thereof. What you see up on top is the different time frames. Time frames, one minute, five minute, 15, 30, 60, 240, daily, weekly. These are the different pairs, currency pairs. And what you see is an arrow. And the, it's a trend, it's a trend uh, chart, or, or basically we call it the trends window. So what, what you see is the interpretation of the charts in the form of an arrow, either a green one or a red one. The market's either going down or going up. If it's going up, you'll get a green arrow. If it's going down, you'll get a red arrow. Simple. You don't have to be looking at charts, trying to figure out which way the slope is or whatever, all that crap. You just got the arrow. That's it. You also get the uh, average daily range right in this column. So you'll pick what you want to trade. Well, I like Euro Yen because it moves a lot. And Pound Yen because it moves a lot as well, right? So that's the, fir that's the first thing. Second, we have what we call the TS matrix. The TS matrix, matrix stands for trade signal matrix. These are the signals that basically are found on the different uh, time charts. Again, one minute, five minute, 15, 30, 60, 240, and so on. And the different, uh, different proprietary uh, strategies that we use to enter the market. There's the, uh, uh, over here, there's the tr basically the basic trend. Then there's the SRM, which is a combination of stochastics, RSI, and MACD. There's our probability indicator was the probability that this market will be going up you know, over the next 30 minutes and so on. Uh, then we've got the high Kanashi. We've got the different uh, moving averages. You're overbought, oversold, and, and so on. So when I, when I look at a chart, and what does it say? Euro dollar. So when I look at... Uh, uh, this window, I basically see a canvas. And this canvas is painted with arrows. And the more green the canvas is, the, the more the market's moving up. Also, the more red the uh, canvas is, the more the market is moving down because the various different indicators and the various strategies are confirming what, the, uh, what, what all the other strategies are, are saying. So if we look at uh, Euro Yen, now, which way do you think this market's going? I'm sorry? Which way do you think this market's going? Is there any question? If you look at the chart, you would, you would confirm that. So if I know this is how it works. When I'm setting up my trading, my harvester, basically what I'll, what I'll do, I'll open my advanced module, and I'll say, I'm trying to determine now my three steps for my entry. So I'm trying to determine the market direction. So the mar this is how I determine the market direction. I will look at uh, this function that says TS matrix percentage synchronized. I'll open the setup, and the setup is my canvas. And when I open it, the canvas is all blank. There's nothing on it. The software, however, allows me to paint the canvas any way I want. Now, I want to determine which direction the market is going in terms of a long-term primary market direction. So I, if I want to trade to the upside, what I will do, 
I will create by just simply clicking or double clicking. I will say I want all of these arrows to be pointing to the upside. Right? All of these strategies and I want all those arrows I want at least 70% of them to be green, to be synchronized, 70% of them. So if 70% are green and less than 70% are red, which way do you think the market is going? Right? The market's going up. So I'll say, okay, this is one of my conditions. Right? So, and I will add it or I will edit it. Now, the next condition would be, uh, in addition to what we had uh, in terms of the trend arrows on the, uh, in the trend uh, table, I can click on the right, uh, right mouse button, button and switch from just the arrows to an indicator which we call the market strength. And the market strength is a variable from minus 100, which shows in red, to plus 100, separated by zero, of course. So it goes from minus 100, which is to the downside, to plus 100, which is to the upside. And uh, that tells me in each individual uh, or on each individual time chart how strong that particular trend is. So I'm not relying just on a simple red and green arrow. I can also specify how strong the minimum, how minimally strong the market has to be in order for me to begin trading or to initiate my trades. So I'll I'll uh, get out of that and I will set it up with TS matrix any value and the way I will set it up again I'll open my canvas I'll open my canvas I'll sp and I'll say I want my 30 minute or my 60 minute or my 240 minute chart to show market strength of at least, I'll specify, at least 44. Now, to the upside. To the downside, I want the exact opposite. And not just that, but I will want Oops, I'm trying to make this bigger. I want my primary direction to be at least a certain percentage, if I'm trading to the downside, of all of these arrows. So when all of these elements are in place, they are contingent upon each other, then the software automatically places these trades. And it will place them also based on uh, the specific parameters that I assign. For example, uh, to start a harvester, I will specify to start a harvester, any one of these signals has to be present contingent upon the market, uh, the primary market direction as well as the market strength. And there's my three-step entry. So after my three-step entry, once I have the three-step entry identified and set, what I will do is determine the size of my trade, which is on the basis of my account. That's very, very simple. And uh, two, I will set up my defense mechanism. In this particular case, it would be the trade recovery or the zone. And in this case, I have the zone set as 200 with a trade recovery move of 6,000, which means that I can go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And if I went through the 200 pip zone, 
what, 20 times right here, my total net uh, drawdown is only 3,600 pips. So on 10 lots, after 20 moves, back and forth and back and forth, so the market can stay there all at once. It won't be there more than, the most I've ever seen it was six in the last 36 months, right? But it could be there 20 times, I'm only 3,600 pips down, that's it. How do I overcome those 36, uh, 3,600 pips? Because I have a total of a total of 32 different sequences running at the same time looking for the proper time to enter the market and offset the trades that go against the original trade. That's how we do it. And it's all done automatically. In fact, it's done in such a way that you don't really have to touch the software for as long as you're trading. I mean, from time to time, you might have to go in and resynchronize it, but that doesn't happen very often. So, uh, what I'm trying to say is that there is technology available that will allow you to uh, basically uh, customize your entries as per the three-step setup that we talked about, as well as combine it with the no-loss zone recovery in a way that no other way I know. If you're trading manually, keep your worst enemy, which is your own emotions, in check. Never fall in love with any one trade that you place. Be prepared to get out at any time. Never ever fight the trend. Always try to trade in the direction of the trend. Not like I was doing with jumping in regardless of where the direction is going. This was just for illustration that we have a mechanism an algorithm available that will get you out of trouble should you happen to get in one. The market always does what it wants, not what you want. Do not listen to anyone, please. The worst thing you can do is pollute your mind with beliefs that the market's gonna go in one direction. It usually will go in the other direction. It, it will cost you. I'm speaking from experience here. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is the price. Not news, not the NFP report or whatever. It's all bullshit. Only thing that matters is the price and trading automation is paramount. If you are interested in setting up your demo account or real live account, I will actually be giving away five worldwide 500 free licenses of the software over the next 90 to 120 days. They'll be strategically all over the world because we want the software to go out and help people make money. If you're serious as a heart attack, I mean, if you're dead serious, and you would like to work with me directly to become the best trader you can be, please contact me at this address.